All right, we're back. It's Comp 213, Web Interface Design, and it's Week 11, Lesson 11, Part 1. And um, what we're doing is um, we're going to be talking about a couple things. First, I want to talk about talk to the schedule a little bit because I think we need to discuss um, our schedule again. And I try and do this at the beginning of every week just to make sure that we're all on the same page. So if we look at what's required for this week according to our outline, right? And again, I would do this differently if I had... Uh, if it was my outline, I would do it a little bit slightly differently, but it's a pretty good outline, what she's got going on here. Um, one thing we can't do is this. I'm not going to be talking about dynamic web templates. Why? Dynamic web templates are for expression web, right? We're not doing expression web, so this is gone. We're not going to talk about this. Um, I do want to talk about, about next week, I will be talking about media inter interactivity a little bit. We may talk about JavaScript at a, little, a very high level in week 12, right? Just a very high level, just because, you know, we need to understand when we talk interactivity, what it is, right? How do we add JavaScript, some basic things around JavaScript, but nothing in detail, because I cannot do JavaScript justice within a week. It's just not possible. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, HTML video, we'll talk a little bit about multimedia in some ways next week. We'll cover chapter 11. This week, if you notice, there is no chapter assigned, so we're going to meet up with anything we missed from, from web forms this week, kind of get all that done. Um, also, if you notice, project is this week, which is going to happen on day two. So this is day one, day two, we'll talk about a project, and I'll assign that. And chances are it'll be due a couple weeks down the road. Maybe if someone sweet talks me, I can do it by week 14. So I'll accept it like the last day, of the last week of class. We'll see how it goes. I might give you a few weeks on it because it's a bigger project. I believe you're allowed to work with one or two people on, right? I got to look at that and see. It might be individual. I got to see what her requirements were. Okay, but that's really it in a nutshell. What we're going to be talking about this week is a little bit about um, um, uh, forms. And I want to talk about, about a bit about planning and what wireframes are and all that kind of stuff. Because part of what we do as web developers, designers, is understand how to put together a pretty good plan. Right? So if you were going to do costing out of a, of a plan, how do I cost it out? How do I cost out a page? What do I do? What does that mean, costing out a page and costing out a, a thing? Fine, we're doing HTML5 and CSS3. That's just the technical piece of it. But how do I put these plans together? How do I design a page so it looks right? And then how do I, from my design, how do I come up with HTML5 and CSS3 that makes sense, right? So we'll talk about that a little bit this week as well. So without further ado, I'd like to start with that piece as opposed to the end of forms. So let's talk about that for the first hour. So there's a couple of interesting sites, and I kind of showed you guys when we were talking before class um, what I what I recommend to you. Um, now I have some, let's see if I have it over here. I may have it over here. Um, I, I have some um, links that I'm going to, uh, again, I, I keep saying I'm going to share them with you, but I do have some links. Uh, one of them is this, this link uh, for bubble.us. It's a mind map, and uh, who knows what mind maps are? Mind maps are like, we can use uh, them to create almost like site maps, um, but also uh, to create uh, a plan, as an example, uh, for what our web page is going to look like. So when we start off with bubble.us, which is, this is just a free version I'm looking at right here. As an example, we start with the start here symbol, right? So here's our start start here. So if you want to join me on bubble.us and just start uh, doing this, so we can talk, do it together. So let's say, for example, I have a five-page site that I want to put together, okay? So there's one piece I need for sure is I have my content pages. So here's my content pages. Right, so my content pages are going to include things like, um, you know, my home page. Right, so here's my home page. These are all my home, my, my content pages. My home, and you know what? I also have some other stuff in here. Like I have my products. My let's see the five-page site example. Right, products, services. You know, an example about us. And here, let's do contact us. So these are five pages. Right. That's typically the five pages that all major websites have to one degree or another. They have all these sets. I'm just going to put them here. So if you notice, it's uh, this flexible web tool is pretty cool. Uh, products and services. They have you know the, the ability to do this kind of stuff, to, to kind of put these in order the way you like, order them out. All right. Now, if you notice, this is just a flow chart, right? So you can kind of put these pages down the way you like. And you can you know kind of highlight these pages Move them around the way you like. So our home page, okay. So these are these are our, our content pages, right? What does our what does our home page have that I want to include in my design? So let's put them over here. 
So here's my home page. Well, what, what kind of page, what kind of other links does my home page have? Right? Well, my home page, you know what? It has a link um, to uh, products. So I have my, my, it connects with products too. So how do I do that? So, I mean, again, I, I can, I have a product link. There's stuff that's in there. So products link. And uh, what I mean by that is it has some kind of section where um, the products link itself, it, it's almost like a, a superhero link, if you will, that links into my product section, right? So some kind of products link. You know what? It also has just uh, other things that I'm, I'm missing as well from my homepage. You know what? It also has things like um, some kind of gallery, let's say. There might be some kind of gallery that's pretty, uh, pretty uh, 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 you know, straightforward of, of products and, and services or whatever I have, right? And my products link are going to come from my pro my gallery, so some, some kind of gallery. And maybe on top of that, um, I'm definitely going to have a nav bar. So let's add in a nav bar. So I'm, on my home page, I have my primary nav, you know, as an example, that's going to lead me in. And you see, I'm, I'm just breaking this out. The stuff that I require, high level, very, very high level here I'm planning, right? So there's I, my nav bar, my gallery. And my primary nav, right, it's going to, I have a whole new section. So let's make a whole new section here. And I'm going to put this over here. And this is going to be called primary nav. And my primary nav, of course, is going to link into my, all my pages, these product services about us and contact us pages. Those are the same, same things. Right, but they're not going to be the same as my content, just primary nav. And you can talk about your primary nav in detail here. Maybe I'm going to also have um, something else called a secondary nav, right, which has other pages. Like, for example, it has things like a privacy policy, um, you know, for my site, as well as uh, some other pages, like, for example, a um, terms of use, right? So, terms of use policy. We may even have here. Um, you know, and it's, it's less common these days, but some kind of site map, right? And again, that's secondary nav. And maybe you're going to have other things, like for example, also in the secondary nav, maybe you also have, in addition to some of these things, you also have a contact page, a contact, um, um, you know, link to links to contact, link to contact page, link to contact uh, page, right? My secondary nav, and usually it's at the bottom. Secondary nav typically you put it at the bottom, right? We we don't include secondary nav at the top of the page typically or at the side, right? Uh, that's our primary nav's business. And usually I put primary nav with with our, our content pages and our like our home page. So almost my primary nav is pretty much what looks like this. It has our home product services about us, contact us, all these kinds of things, right? So those are the things. So this, what, this is what this tool allows us to do. And it's not just this tool. Um, this is bubble.us. It creates almost like a, uh, a page for us to, um, in order for us to kind of plan, a little bit of, of website planning. This is one of the things we do. There's also one more tool out there that's free that I know of called mockups, uh, or sorry, uh, mindmeister, mindmeister.com. Sorry, that's the one. And if you go to mindmeister.com and you have to log in for this one, again, there's some, a free version. And if I do a new mind map, for this one, let's just call this one. Um, you know, again, I can I can choose a, a blank brainstorming, a project plan, a meeting, SWOT analysis, right? All this kind of stuff. There's there's things to do. Let's do some um, you know some we can do a brainstorming. And usually we do that kind of thing. All right. So here's our brainstorming. We can start off with a template like this. This is one thing I do like about it, right? Um, and we can start off with the same kind of idea, right? So we have here's our and if you notice they have some. Um, interesting ways of mapping our um, our ideas and goals and so on. Uh, if you want to try that, um, and if this doesn't work for us, let me just get rid of this. So let's say brainstorming wasn't for me, right? I could always choose. And this is why I like this offer. I can always cho choose a blank. I can go blank, and then there's my new mind map. And now it's very similar to what we did with um, the other one, right? In that I can add in as many of these um, links, if you will, as I like. So here's like me add, I can make this bigger or smaller, right? So I can promote, promote stuff. So let's say I can call this content pages, right? And then what I want to do is I want to add um, another one as an example. So I can add an additional uh, links. So here's this one here. So I can, let's say if I add an additional link, I want to call this my home page, right? I'll add another one. And, and if, I, if it's in the wrong position, home, um, 
uh, products and services. You know, it's products a little bit less. I can pull this part, pull this as, as make this part of this. So home products and services. Um, you know, I can depending where I'm clicking, it'll add additional links in there, right, for me. So I can kind of use this tool for the same thing, but I have to usually enter some information in. So prod cuts, yeah, I really spell right. Uh, services. Let me just adjust that because just I just can't stand bad spelling. Products. Probably I made mistakes like that earlier, but I didn't detect them. So products, services, and so on. And the same kind of idea. And then what, what happens with this one is you can color these different colors. Um, for example, let's say I'm in my home link, I want to make this, you know, a different color. I can certainly, for, for the next links that come underneath, they'll be, you know, kind of styled a little differently. So maybe we'll call this. And if you notice, my, my home now is colored this other color. It's kind of a brownie color. And, um, you know, I can add in, in my pages, like, for example, I want to have a gallery. You know, and then you know maybe in my in the same sense, I also want to have in my home page, I also want to have like that uh, you know some kind of uh, links to uh, secondary nav, right? As an example as well, and blah blah. You can start brainstorming here like this, right? And then if I want to promote something, like for example, let's say I want to make my my web page my my home page, or I want to zoom in and out, I can kind of zoom out, and I can zoom in, and I can move things around. And I can print this out and save this and all that kind of stuff. But really, it becomes almost like this idea of putting things together. You can use Visio if you're a if you're a PC person. You can certainly use Microsoft Visio and Microsoft Visio. If I was to go to Microsoft, for those people who don't know what that is, right? Visio. Um, it's uh, definitely a, a Visio thing. So if I go to, um, let's see if they have it here. For Microsoft 2013, um, I'm just going to go here for there's some there's some products that you can certainly look at. Um, it tells you what it includes, but Visio is almost like this um, um, flowcharting software, um, if you will, and uh, diagram software um, that you can go in and download. So Microsoft has a great product again, Microsoft uh, MS Visio. If I can actually spell it properly to give you an idea of, of what it looks like. And um, I just want to go to Microsoft Canada to kind of show what that looks like, right? Okay, so, and if you notice that there's some cost to it if you're going to buy it, but for us, because we have um, here at Centennial, we have DreamSpark, Microsoft DreamSpark. You can always download um, Visio here for, for free to use for our project. So if you notice there's Microsoft Visio 2013, you can certainly download this. Right, if you wanted to use that for a diagramming kind of software, it's free for students. Right, so I don't think there's anything wrong with using Visio. If you're a Mac user, um, like I am, um, I like using. I want to go show you Balsamic, which is something that's been very popular uh, for Mac people. Right, very same idea where you can kind of create. Um, you can use um, actually. Let me go back. This isn't the right software for this. One more time. I meant <laughs> um, we don't use Balsamic for that. Um, we use um, Balsamic's for, for wireframes and so on. What I want to try and do is when we come together, we have a plan and I start looking at different things. I mean, if you notice, I, I use the um, Adobe products. You can certainly use any one of them. You can certainly draw stuff, but my Node Pro um, is another piece. I'm just going to make it so that it's a new document uh, in documents. Let's just call it a new document. And there's a mind map again. So come back to this mind map idea, right? Mind Node Pro. So again, you would have your your uh, you know your main site. Um, so let's say we'll, we'll call it uh, my site mysite.com, and then mysite.com uh, may have again. You can go with a home page, right? And what's the, what's the home page going to have on it? Well, it has you know a gallery, you know, as an example. And then what else does the home page have on it? Well, it has, like I said, you know, some kind of secondary nav. And you kind of plan these things out, the same kind of idea. So there's different, there's different kinds of um, software out there to do the same thing. Some of them are bought, like, for example, Visio and MyNode for, uh, for Mac, right? And some of them are free. So one piece is we start by creating our, our um, almost like a brainstorm or a sitemap of what our, our site files are going to look like. And actually, it helps us. Um, you know, to organize our file structure. Like remember what I talked about before, like how you should have a, you know, your, a file that's separate for your uh, folder for content, which is your style sheets and so on. You might have another folder for assets. 
you might have another folder for that. Well, we can actually build that in into our plan. So if I go back to my Note Pro, I can kind of decide, well, I want, you know, this, um, this structure for our file. So you might have another section for my file structure, and you kind of lay it out for yourself as, uh, from the beginning, before you actually program one word. Okay, so that's one. Um, the other thing I like to look at when it comes to uh, stuff, after we have our bit of a brainstorm going on, is I also want to look at things like mockups. How do I create mockups? So I've got my these two things I showed you, which is bubble us, and I also talked about this, you know, um, MindMeister, right, which is free. Or and then there's another one that I want to look up called mockups. Mockups, um, mockups with a Q, um, a Q U P S dot com, right, allows you to kind of put together what the look and feel of your pages are going to look like before you build them out. So for us. It's okay now uh, because, you know, uh, from a very high level, what we're doing nowadays is kind of laying it out the way we feel like so far, right? So there's a couple things you can do with mockups. So there's a software that does it for us. This is one option. So again, what I would like to look at here with mockups is I'm going to look and see as an example of some, uh, you know, a container, like some kind of browser or a window. If I'm doing a window, usually it's something to do with uh, some kind of application I'm building. If I use a browser, then I use the browser for the container. So this is my outer container, right? And this is what mockups. And I can change certain aspects. Like if I double click on certain things, I can say something like instead of Mozilla, you know, I can look at Chrome. That's the browser I want to use. And instead of mockups.com, I can put the site name that I'm working on. So let's say I'm working on a site uh, that's example.com whatever the site is, then I can put that in there and it'll be Chrome, my Chrome browser, and this is what it's going to look like, right? And then inside there, I can actually start putting in uh, contents, right? So I can start like with uh, menus um, and so on, nav bars. Like if you notice on the left-hand side, there's quite a, a bit of selection to kind of lay out stuff. Here's an iOS segments. If I want to put segments instead of, uh, to make it look more of like a, um, an iPhone type layout or whatever, um, I can start putting this, that, this stuff in there. So these are the kind of selections I have. Now there's only, I don't have a lot in here. Um, this is the free version again, but you certainly have enough to start going with if you chose this, this stuff. So let's say if I was going to make it more of a, uh, I'm just like searching through to see if something that's appropriate here. Um, but let's, let's look at, here's a breadcrumb menu, and there's also a horizontal, horizontal menu right here. So let's add this in here. So here's my horizontal menu. So let's, as an example, uh, I've got apps, games, movies, books, newspapers. Well, that's not cool. And, you know, let's, let's side this down so it fits in my mock-up. Um, let's say, for example, this would be the brand. So I might have the brand name, brand. And just like we did before, I might have in here, instead of games, it'll be uh, products, uh, you know, here, uh, services. That's an example. And then about us and uh, a contact us page, contact us, right? So what this does is it kind of creates that, when I type it out, it actually creates the toolbar to look at like what I want it to look like. If I want something to be uh, highlighted or whatever, if I want this whole thing to be rounded, I can change to rounded. I can change the, the stroke and the thickness. Uh, I can make this as a thick bar, you know, instead of rounded, I can make it so that it takes up the whole screen, you know, to give you the look and feel that you want to design the site, you know, before you build it out, right? Good thing about this program is it also tells you, if I, if I kind of hover over it, it tells you my exact coordinates. Let's take a look. It says left 131, top 140. So you can actually get coordinates uh, of where this is. If you look up here, it also tells you uh, the coordinates of width and the height. So you can be very specific about your design. So for example, you know what? My width is 567. I don't think my width should be 567. I think my width should be at least, you know, uh, 600. Well, that's cool. That means it's going to be out here. And you know what? My web page... Um, it's a 583, so let's make it at least 640. I'm just going to give you an example for this particular view. And my height, this is a typical view here, 480. So this is 640 by 480 design. And you know what? I want my, uh, my this particular mock-up to look a certain size, right? Okay, so I've got my, my site here uh, as an example. And then underneath that, I can put additional uh, types of content. So if you notice, there's uh, there's a note. I can put notes in there. I can put a, if I want to draw boxes, I can definitely draw um, boxes around here. So I can drag and drop. There's my box. And I can note what this box will be. So maybe this is going to be where I have um, a big marquee or some kind of large picture, you know, that kind of 
uh, talks to my old my client's uh, site's going to look to right. Maybe I have another uh, a bunch of other content in here. Like for example, I might have some secondary content down here where I lay things out, and I can also copy and paste, right? So copy, paste. So this allows me to. If you see what I'm doing here, I'm kind of laying out what my page is going to look like, you know. And again, this is as per specifications to match client requirements, right? And maybe uh, on the one side or the other, see if I can. You know, kind of do all that stuff. I can move things around if I don't like it. And maybe I need to put some kind of other information in here. Uh, like, you know, I might have some kind of uh, button. So I'll put a button, you know, and this will be submit. Obviously, submit doesn't make any sense, but we'll double click on this and change the button to uh, see, you know, uh, see more, you know. And this will be almost like a, uh, some kind of, um, you know, hero button or a button that's going to take us in to see our content. Right again, so again, mockups. You can create your content, your the way your pages are going to look. And normally, what we do is we don't just do one of them. We do uh, uh, wireframes for this is what this is called. We do wireframes for our landing page, which is our home page. We do wireframes for different pages that look differently. Like for example, our contact page might be might look different. We're going to do wireframes for our products page and services pages. They might look different. Uh, we might have a social media page that we do a little different. Right, so we do some four, four or five different uh, wireframes because each of those pages are going to look different. If you really want to be a stickler, right, you know, you may want to even do pages for how it's going to look like for mobile, right? Because right now this is for desktop at 640 by 480. You know, you may want to put stuff, uh, additional wireframes uh, for how things are going to look for uh, for mobile, for the mobile size, for like 320 by 480. So if I was going to restyle this page for 320 by 480, then I can certainly copy this whole thing. And paste it. Right. Let's move it on this over here. Right. I'm just gonna kind of paste it over outside of this map here. There we go. And if I look over here, you know, our page is pretty small, but I can make this larger. Right. And this is all online. This is the great thing about this one. Um, I like it even if you pay for it because it's all online. This is a good thing. It's compatible. It's cross-platform, and so on. So I know this is wrong, right? Because this is 640 by 480, and I know I want to I want to hit mobile, which is 320 by 480, right? So I know I'm going to have half the space. Look what's happened here. I know that my design has to change. I don't have to guess that it's not going to fit for these things. I know my design to be uh, to be responsive, and they also have some other kinds of um, icons and so on. Like here's an icon, and I know this is what my page is going to look like when it's in, in, in responsive mode. I want an icon. I'll leave that icon there for a second. Um, and let's say my my uh, menu, my navigation menu, isn't going to be so big. So instead of having this, I might just have something that's called menu, right? Menu. And I want to make this menu smaller, so let's say it's going to look like this. And maybe this, in on the uh, you know uh, mobile side, is going to have some kind of icon. And if I double click on the icon, I can actually choose some a selection of icons. Like for example, this, right? That that typically looks like what it looks like, right? Icon. I can also double click on here. Sorry, click on here, and then show the alignment. Like right now, for example. Um, I can show that it's uh, left aligned. I can go right aligned, so that's where I want my uh, this thing to be. Um, and so on, I can take this completely out and just type text. I can be as specific or as um, simple as I want. Maybe, you know what, this big marquee that's going that's coming here, it'll be definitely shrunk down to this size. I might have some like this, but if you notice, I won't have enough space for all this stuff, right, because it won't fit on my page, so my page is going to look a little different, right, because this is what my, my 640 by 480 page is going to look like. Maybe I still want this to see more, but I want a gallery um, that kind of is more of a thumbnails gallery. Maybe I can only fit two in here. So maybe I'll do one, two. Oops. I'll just undo that. Maybe I'll fit this one. And by the way, you can lock certain things too. Um, if you notice, there's a lock button. So you can lock the, the control. So if I don't want to touch my screen, I can lock this one. So now this one won't move, even if I want to. Right? So some really neat controls here. So let's say I want to copy this one in here. And I'm just, again, we're just fooling around. Uh, trying to come up with a design, but maybe I want my design to look more like this. So maybe a little bit smaller, you know, something that that kind of fits more with mobile, with a C more that kind of goes one of kind of goes in there because that's what I want my design to look like. And then I have an idea of how I want my CSS to function. I want my CSS to do things a little differently. Then I'm obviously not going to make it so that each page looks the same. I might have a you know mobile site or or a, uh, you know for each each landing page or each site I'll have a wireframe. Okay, so this is mockups, giving an example also of what wireframes are used for. But there's also mock flow. Mock flow is definitely another 
another uh, um, uh, program we can use. And mock flow is very similar to mockups in that it has some drag and drop tools on the right. Again, they're, most of these tools are definitely allow you to demo and cut and paste or even uh, do a screen capture, which is a great thing to do um, if you want to um, start designing your, uh, your, your pages, right? So example of this, I can, if you notice, they have some of the similar drop downs here on the right hand side instead of left, there's slightly different. So here's my layout builder. That's one thing I do like a lot about uh, Mockflow, which is a little different. So I'm going to drag and drop my, my layout builder over here. And if you notice, it gives me this, you know, uh, standard design, which I can expand on. I can start, you know, kind of dragging and dropping content in here in my layout, right? So again, if I want buttons, if I want text, uh, they do a lot, really good job with um, um, uh, kind of lorem ipsum text, if you want to check that out. They also have uh, captcha, buttons, uh, da uh, kind of data input, uh, horizontal scroll bars, uh, all kinds of different, um, here's a menu bar that I was looking for. Here's my menu bar, right? Same idea, right? So here's my menu bar, and this time, for this design, maybe my menu bar is in the middle. You know, I could also have it so that the menu bar is horizontal on this side. If I want to take away, um, you know, some of this stuff, it, I can also plan it so that there's a little layout builder over here. Take a look, right? Where I have a horizontal box here, and I can add a different items here on the left-hand side. I can, I can also export this right away to CSS. So it'll actually create my base CSS model for this, this layout and so on. Like there's a lot of really cool things you can do um, you know to start off instead of having nothing you can start off with a basic layout um, you can certainly decide exactly the um, you know the size and position and everything is it's you know it can be quite complex. So that's mock flow online tools that are you can start off and there's some really cool uh, free resources that you can get from those. So I'll just kind of kill those things. Um, the other thing that, that's out there, um, of course, there's some pages, there's some design tools you can use for Windows and Mac. Um, some of the same tools, like for example, Visio, the same tool that you would use for Windows from a, um, a planning perspective for you know, uh, mind maps and brainstorming, is the same tool that I would recommend Visio for ma making mind maps or making um, a flow. You can also use PowerPoint. PowerPoint's very versatile tool. So if I actually pulled up PowerPoint and if I started off with it, um, PowerPoint and both Word and PowerPoint have uh, built-in uh, tool shapes that you can you can kind of drag and drop if you wanted to kind of put together a layout. Um, and there's some uh, templates you can download for wireframes. Uh, it also works with um, if there's other programs that do the same thing, um, you know, uh, Wire Sketcher Pro and so on. There's a bunch of other programs that work with Windows. One I like for the Mac is Balsamic. I kind of brought that up earlier, but Balsamic kind of does the same idea. Um, I have this, um, a bunch of different containers here that I can choose from. So here's Balsamic and here's my browser window, you know, as a, uh, the same kind of idea here where I have access to what the browser window is going to look like um, to kind of draw this out. And I can draw this as the, uh, to scale. Obviously, I want to draw it as, to, as much to scale as possible. I can also choose th the one thing I like about um, uh, Balsamic, which that's why it's kind of standard for us web designers on the Mac. Um, it has a lot of stuff that's organized nicely. So here's my, you know, my. Um, menu bar that I can stretch to how many I want and if you notice it has um, you know one two three and I can actually put the links in place I can actually make a f almost a fully functional uh, menu bar here right by uh, just dragging and dropping and actually adding in the links right by putting in a web address or whatever and it actually creates a lot of my a bit of content for me as well so some really good tools out there uh, to create um, you know, uh, some wireframes uh, and so on. Uh, one thing, again, one really cool thing about about this is not only does it have containers for uh, uh, the website, but you can also choose um, iOS specific or Android specific stuff. Like for example, if I want to put together an iPhone layout, I can do that. I can just drag and drop a iPhone in here and um, I can start plotting out what my iPhone is going to look like, right? So it kind of gives the uh, client a good example of what it's going to look like when you create your your website, right? Here's an example of a typical menu for iOS. I'm just going to drag and drop this in there, right? So this is what some stuff that uh, you can include some of this or all of this or whatever. There's also iPad. So if I kind of, you know, um, I want to move around a little differently, right? So I want to, uh, I can dr certainly drag and drop, but I can, I want to move around. I can also drag in an iPad. Let's put that in there, right? And here's my iPad. Right, 
and my iPad is the old iPad. You can certainly uh, you know decide on the the size. This size is six six sixteen by nine sixteen. You can choose the exact uh, pixel ratio that you want uh, over here. Uh, you can also change the orientation. So right now the orientation is uh, landscape, or sorry, portrait. You can go to landscape, so you can see what it looks like on iPad on, on, in landscape mode, because that's one thing that mobile devices have: two orientations as opposed to just one, um, and and so on. And you can keep it. There's even a layout mode where you can have some basic uh, layout information in terms of a site map you can build here, uh, a link bar, navigation bar, um, a horizontal, uh, you know, kind of a you know, a splitter, a separator, you can do all kinds of stuff here that allows you to uh, kind of really mock up your pages and, and make them look like what they're going to look like at the end before you ever, you ever, you know, program any kind of CSS or HTML. So that's it in a nutshell. I wanted to kind of give you that because uh, one thing I may ask for on your, um, your final project is a piece of external documentation that says, hey, build out some wireframes for your site. You know, you're going to build a five-page site put together some design work. Not too much, because you know I don't expect you guys to put together a full style guide, right? Um, and I remember, if, if you guys don't know what a style guide is, if I was going to look that up, if I said, if I put together a style guide, right? Just go to Google and actually, you know, kind of look what it is. They have some really good examples of, of, uh, of style guides out here, too. Uh, if you were going to look at what a style guide looks like, um, there is, I'm just going to go down here for some, um, I want to see one that's out there. If I go university, if I go university, like almost like I think it's uh, is it Philadelphia that I remember looking at or University of yeah, there's there's a bunch of them University of Chicago style guide here we go let's look at that one right so here's the Chicago manual of style right and what they talk about is um, well, that's probably not it but let's see if there's other ones out there um, online yeah. So they talk about different things. This is the book. Um, this is not what I was looking for. Um, let's see, go back to style guide. There's a university style guide that I always like to refer to, and I want to make sure that uh, let's take let's take uh, Oxford University here, public affairs. Here we go. Here's a style guide in PDF format. Um, and what it does, I'm just giving you an example of what a style guide would look like, right? Because you guys never seen it. Um, it'll give you an example of what um, abbreviations look like, um, the way the, the uh, things are capitalized. It talks about typography. I will talk about numbers, the way they're done, uh, punctuation, and the way they want you to do certain things. This is just a rule on how to, how to, how to, how to submit things for uh, your essay, right? But at the same token, when you see this kind of stuff that tells you how to do stuff for essays, is the same kind of stuff we do when we create a web, uh, you know, a university, you know, like a web style guide. So like a web style guide. That's really what I want. I want examples. What was that? As a, of a? Not, well, it kind of includes branding, but as, as, as well as um, web specific stuff, right? Because, you know, where the yoga logo is going to be, um, all that stuff. Let me just see if there's one that's up here. But also, because remember the um, what they're going to do, and see if I can find something that's um, that's neat. Um, here is some media temple style guides uh, for web design and development. So these are some. These are some. Um, um, and this, by the way, this Morton Rand uh, Hendrickson. Um, I have to give him big props. He's a um, staff author at uh, Lynda.com, right? So if you're into uh, watching Lynda.com videos, he's someone that's it's really actually a, a um, kind of a pro when it comes to WordPress and stuff, so I gotta give him some um, you know, some props on this one. But take a look at this. There's an example of a style guide where you have your, um, an example of what uh, a mock-up would look like, right? Here's a mock-up. And then you might have some example of CSS and syntax and so on. Um, examples of your, um, what links, where they go, and, and, um, and that kind of thing. How the uh, columns look when they drop. You know, a bunch of different things that, that are on here as well um, that give you examples of how to kind of create a, a style guide. Let me see one more example if I can see one that's really cool. Um, here's another example of, of, of some pages that are up there right now, right? So here's Pebble Road, and, um, you know, they kind of come up with an idea of, of putting up some uh, uh, branding pages of wireframes first, 
and then afterward they, they talk about how things link together uh, and so on. Again, not really exactly what I'm looking for because a full style guide will have colors, uh, navigation, uh, the whole uh, gamut of stuff. I'm trying to find something that's closer. And I don't, I don't want to just, I don't want to waste your time here, but it's not going to happen. I'm going to get some weird pages. I'm going to pages that I shouldn't be going to while I'm recording. That's bad, right? But the idea here is that uh, um, there is no example that I kind of, I can find that I'm really happy with. Um, let's take a look at this one. It might be okay. No, it's not. <laughs> and we're just going to get out of here. Because I'm, I'm I, I don't want to get myself in trouble with when I'm recording. Uh, my Zurb style guides. Zurb actually is interesting. Um, Zurb is one of the companies that um, creates a uh, one of the re responsive frameworks that I like to use. Um, and again, I think I talked about this briefly. There's two main responsive frameworks that I, I kind of like to use. One of them is Zurb Foundation, right? So if I was to look at Foundation for a second. Um, and again, this is kind of a responsive framework, uh, JavaScript responsive framework you can download. And the other one, of course, is Bootstrap, right? So those are the two, uh, getbootstrap.com will be the other one, and they help you make a responsive design. But Style Guide is something totally different. And what I'll do is by the end of the week, I'll try and have something that's an example for you guys. But more or less what you're seeing here is examples of colors and uh, color palettes. And like you said before, part of it is branding, but part of it is also going to be wireframes. What's the site going to look like? before you actually come up with it. So um, style guides, uh, when especially a web style guide, includes not only branding, but also examples of what my CSS is gonna look like, or gonna produce, uh, and, and so on. On that, let's say, for example, you're creating your own site, and um, you want to, um, you know, you're doing a site for school, and you wanna come up with a style guide of your own, right? And you want to have to know, you know, kind of name some colors and so on. Well, there's some really good tools out there for, um, uh, for colors. So if I go to fonts and colors, and this is kind of leading into the next topic that I'm going to be talking about, um, there is a free site that you can go to, um, the Adobe Color Wheel, that allows you to kind of choose some fonts and colors. Now, if you're not a fonts and colors kind of person, right, let's talk about colors first. So let's say, example, I want my fonts or my colors to look like this. I have these, these uh, bunch of colors, right? So I have, you know, this is the, the way my... my uh, my colors are going to look like. And I can choose kind of a comp colors that make sense, that kind of work together on a website. You know, and I can choose certain colors uh, for one part and certain colors for other parts. And I can incorporate these colors because they've got the hex hexadecimal values and the RGB values here that I can use. And I know they're going to come up with these nice colors. But let's say you're not a thinker and you're not someone who's creative and you just want to choose complementary colors. You can certainly do that as well and choose colors like these ones, those kind of Christmas colors. But let's say, for example, I want to choose that, you know, um, colors that go to kind of go together and complement each other. Uh, I can certainly choose those. If I want to choose, uh, there's different schemas that you can choose, kind of uh, a triad of colors, right, that you can choose. Uh, you can also choose things like shades of the same color. So these are all the same colors. So I kind of want to make a blue site, right? And let's say I want to make a light blue site as one of my primary colors, and I want to have some shades here uh, for different parts of my site. I can do that. And uh, color.adobe.com. Um, produces that for us. If you're not creative again and you want to look at um, explore other people's palettes, they've they, a lot of people post really interesting palettes up here as well. By cl clicking the explore button, you can see there's tons and tons of of colors and designs, um, you know, for colors that you can get, that you can grab that kind of have been tested and, and work pretty well. And you can make your own, All right? So colors. Um, and the other thing is, you want to come up with something for a client. Um, as an example, we're just talking strict design right now at a very high level. But you want to get some ideas for what's really cool today. So, and let's say you're, you want to look at some logos, you want to do a mock-up for a logo, but you're not great at logo design and, um, you know, you want to get some ideas for the client. So a great place to look, again, is Logo Lounge. I don't know if you ever see this site here. Logo Lounge, they've got a really cool trend report. Um, let me go to, uh, if I go down here on the side here. Like if you notice, there's articles. If I look at articles on the right uh, for Logo Lounge, there's something called uh, Current Logo Trends. If you go to cur Current Logo Trends, not only will it show you the 2015 Logo Lounge Trend Report, which is kind of cool, talking about um, you know current logo styles and trends, but also ones that go all the way back um, you know into kind of mid to early 2000s, so 2006 when they first started Logo Lounge. 
all the way up to today. And if I look at some examples of 2015 logos, they give you an example. They talk at, at length about stuff that really, really works well. Like, for example, this dot tip kind of logo, if you're interested in logo design, uh, or working with a logo, uh, a graphic artist to understand kind of um, very, very popular logo designs these days and, and, and aspects of logo design that you can add in uh, for your logo. Again, we're not graphic artists, but I want to show it to you from a style perspective, right? Another really cool place to go to um, that I would recommend as well is Dribble, right? Dribble is a site for artists and designers where they share their design work uh, with you. So if you want to take a look at uh, current designs, um, logos, as well as other kind of designs, they're dribble.com. Uh, highly recommend you take a, you know, kind of a glance through there. Some of it's really inspiring. Some of it's meh. But, you know, again, you get a kind of um, a grouping of different things that you can kind of look at to give you some inspiration and, and ideas of what, what's in the, in, the, in the groove right now. And uh, one last site, and I think I mentioned this before, but I highly recommend for anybody who kind of starts off is, um, actually, there's two last two sites. One of them is awards.com. Awards, the uh, A-W-W-W-A-R-D-S, awards with three Ws. They give you the example of some really cool, awe-inspiring um, website designs that are ranked by um, some of, um, you know, some experts across the world. Uh, an example of this one, um, this one is one of the winners, uh, CN, um, and there's other ones that have recently won some design awards here, and you can actually look at some pretty cool uh, designs, and especially if you want to look at, when you're doing market research, I think this helps as well. If I look at a category, like let's say if I want to design for, um, uh, you know, technology companies, I've taken a look at technology company designs, that some stuff that's been done for them, and I can see that there's some design work that's been done for other people, and see, hey, what, what do I like about this one? What don't I like? What do I want to incorporate in my design work when I start off? And again, some of it's going to be beyond you at this point because you're just starting to learn CSS3 and HTML5. But nothing's wrong with taking a look at the, some of the designs that are there. Like, you know, some of them are, are simplistic and straightforward designs, like this one. Take a look at this one with a, with a scooter, right? With two words, go, right? And if you ever want to go into it, just not, you don't have to just uh, uh, kind of look at it like this. You can actually, you know, dive into it and see the actual site itself. So here's uh, gogoro.com. Right, so here's a, an example site, right, and it's a single page uh, kind of scrolling site. So if I scroll, one thing I don't like about this kind of site is um, that it it kind of hijacks your scroll. I, I always hate uh, sites that hijack anything. When they when they control you, I don't like it. Like for example, if I kind of scroll up, I want to be able to kind of go halfway if I want to. But here in the previous examples, when I kind of was scrolling down, it hi kind of hijacked my uh, my information. If you notice, as I scroll up, I get more information. Some stuff comes in from the sides. I get some interactivity here. Um, again, a well put together overall, well put together site that allows me some kind of additional, I can you know gain additional information for some of the stuff they do to show you how they make the piece parts for this particular uh, uh, moped. Okay, or scooter, whatever they want to call this thing, this high-tech device. But here's an example of what they do. They give you, they even break down, break down the work, right, for how this is done. There's also the top navigation that you have up here, right? So smarter, easier, um, almost like uh, their values for some of these things. If I, I just click smarter, you know, it's taking a little bit of time to load. It could be the school server, but um, each one of the sections a lot of times has some really good examples of, of, of good CSS. I'll let that uh, kind of phase out for a second. One more thing, and then I'll stop, I swear, okay? Uh, CSS Zen Garden. I don't know if you guys have looked at this at all. You guys look at this one, CSS Zen Garden? Who's not, who has had a chance to look at this one? Um, CSS Zen Garden, one of the great things about this one is um, you get a basic design, right? Like so, the HTML for each of these documents is identical. And then using CSS2 techniques and some CSS3 techniques, you can change the document so it looks different, right, uh, for each uh, sign. So let's, here's an example of this one. Let's look at view all designs, right? Well, there's a bunch of different designs, same content, HTML is unchanged. Only the CSS has changed. Let's take, let's take a look at this one. So here's just CSS changes, right? Same content, right? So it gives you an idea of what they can do with pure CSS, right? Now, some of it's neat and some of it, um, I'm not sure if I like this one, right? In terms of it's kind of a little old school, um, but this isn't bad. Right? So this kind of stuff is very popular these days. Take a look at this one, right? where you have single page design, um, you're scrolling, you have sub-navigation down here, 
Um, no, not a lot of content here. That's why this is a great test, right? But there's some designers that kind of have um, uh, thrown out work here that allow you to, and this is, of course, fully responsive. That's kind of one thing that you have to know these days, that 99% of sites that are out there that are newly created, they go with this whole responsive design or web design uh, kind of framework. So very, very cool. Uh, CSS Zen Garden, some great ideas there. Uh, to take a look at some designs that are out there right now. And they've numbered all of them, so you can kind of look and see um, some of the, you know, if you want a kind of a different kind of theme or an idea for the same content. And you can see what works and what doesn't. Like, for, for example, this one, one thing I don't like about this site is it's very boxy. I mean, again, it goes with this whole, um, you know, uh, looks like grid uh, of, a, of a, some kind of skyscraper or some kind of other design. I'm not sure what that is. Um, that looks like, but some kind of, um, you know, building. And then... You know, you've got some uh, some stuff in here. The one thing I don't like, it's very stark. It's very white and black. Not really a big fan. Uh, but then you have other designs like this one. Same content, but different styling that, um, you know, give you a different look and feel. Again, not really sure if I like this look and feel. It's very basic. Uh, not a lot of navigation layout here. Uh, we do have a floating background that's in the background. And some uh, one thing I do like is some of the simplistic icons that they use here uh, for looking around. But otherwise, um, just overall, not a big fan of this one. So again, you can take a look at some of these sites. Maybe they'll inspire you. Maybe they'll, you'll say, I like this piece. I like that piece. I want to kind of include that in my site design. Right? But it's a great place to take a look, especially when you do research for other companies. You might look at a company that's hired you to do a web, web design, and you're going to do, re you can do some research for them. And you want to look at, at some uh, current industry um, trends that are out there right now. It's things like, like their competitors. What are they doing? Right? You should know what their competitors are doing. Uh, take a look at their sites and so on. And a good example of that, really quickly, is if I was going to make a competitor to Home Depot, right? I would research Home Depot, right? I'll look and take a look at what Home Depot looks like. Let's take a look at Home Depot for a second. So here's Home Depot, right? And if you don't look at their site um, as an example, if I, if I scrunch in, does it, is it responsive? No. But then again, think about what, why they don't have it responsive. One of the things they do, Home Depot does anyway, is they make a native app for Android and iOS. So that's their solution to responsive design. They don't, make, they don't strive to make it responsive. And they're like, hey, hold on. If someone was going to order from us on our store, they'd probably use you know, the app that comes with your device. That, that's where their, their strategy is. Not sure if I wholly agree. There's, this whole, um, there's a couple camps on that one. To, to be na native or not to be native? What's the better question? You know, what, what should I do? Should I be responsive? Should I do a mobile-specific design? What's my strategy when I create my design work, right? Uh, or, and again, maybe they're targeting this one for strictly for desktop. Let's take a look at some other competitors. So we'll look at, uh, you know, Lowe's, because Lowe's is a big uh, competitor here in Canada. So here's Lowe's. Uh, they also supply very similar uh, products, right? And again, they produce, though, uh, kind of an uh, initial responsive type design that kind of gives you a stacked layout. Right, so again, not uh, again, not 100% uh, good. But if you notice, CR, if you notice our secondary nav here, when we get to this breakpoint, once I go higher, bigger than this, I get my secondary nav that kind of floats in the bottom. That's response to design techniques, my friends. Right, so that's good. That's that I think is a little bit more advanced. And they have a native app that you can download for iOS and Android. Right, so there's a couple of of um, uh, strategies here. One more, um, home hardware. If I go to home hardware. Um, and I want to look at their, uh, their site. Now, I'm guessing it's probably going to be very similar to Home Depot. There it is, right? Oh, sure. You can use my location. No, I don't want to sign up right now. I hate that. That's another hijacking thing I hate. Sign up now for a thing, right? And they put up this big pop-up in the middle. A very old school. Um, highly don't recommend these days to, to uh, try and hijack your customers into signing up when they first come in. Uh, negative technique for me, right? So then if you look at this, Home Depot. And then here, Home Hardware, um, they have a bit of a gallery, which again, is very old school these days. Um, what's more in style is big, bold graphics, and they're not responsive, just like their, uh, their competitors, right? Um, I think Rona still exists in Canada too, right, Rona? Yeah, sure, sure, pretty sure they do. So here's Rona, um, and there's, now this is a fully, a full width site. Again, they do the exact same kind of uh, stuff as Home Depot and Lowe's. And one thing that you can also notice here is that they're also, they also do this pop-up for welcome. A lot of, a very busy site, right? And not responsive in the least, right? So again, to me, some of the things that they, they would need to improve, but again, we know that uh, in, in Canada, in Ontario anyway, 
Rona's has some real challenges uh, staying afloat. Big other, other big producers similar to Rona and Home Depot, but not exactly the same, will be people like Walmart. If you look at Walmart, uh, we know that Walmart has a big presence online as well as, um, you know, kind of in store. And if you notice here, they do have a responsive design. And here, see how the design changes, right? So here we have, you know, a full, uh, you know, kind of fully fleshed out design and how it didn't bounce back. Let's try that again. Let's refresh. Let's refresh this one. So if you notice here, they have icons and everything in flyers that are already here. And then as I kind of go down, as I pair down, boom, then they kind of, you know, they, they kind of get to this responsive layout, um, you know, which is kind of cool. If you notice the top bar here from a breadcrumbs perspective, it uh, doesn't work badly. Not 100% happy with how when you get to this level here, this, this break point. And if, again, if I was to go to the hamburger and go to um, more tools, if I went to look at developer tools, if you wanted to see what the breakpoint is, and if I kind of went out this way, you can see that the breakpoint right now is less than 475. If I go less than 400, it won't allow me to go less than 400, right? So the minimum size is 400 uh, from a breakpoint perspective. But usually, uh, you know, kind of uh, most sites, if you go to a phone size, it's about this big, 480, less than 480 pixels, which would be here. Once you go beyond 485, 480 pixel, then you're going to get to uh, uh, tablet size, but that's the uh, that's the size that you're looking at right now, right? Um, so that's very a very similar site, and um, Canadian Tire would be the other one, right? Another kind of retailer retailer that does a little bit of everything, right? Let's look at Canadian Tire, and let's close this one up. Okay, so again, something that they've modernized over the last little while, um, much better looking site than they used to have. One thing I really like about Canadian Tire site is that they have these icons. So you have some sections, and they broke them out. They broke out these sections in terms of um, um, kind of different icons. One thing that's kind of boggling to me, though, is if when I hover my mouse, take a look where I have my mouse. Once I go here, the, just between these two points, it goes from one side to the other. So as I kind of move my mouse along, it kind of decides for me where to go. I would have liked these uh, kind of um, you know um, link maps, if you will, or heat maps, to be a little closer to their to the icons, because I think it's from here to here is too far away. There's like not, there should be nothing in here that I'm linking to, right? Uh, that's just me. Um, and, uh, but, but other than that, I think that, you know, you've got some standard stuff going on with, it's not a single page site. It has some other navigation. And you notice the hamburger is already present here for us at this stage uh, right away. So it's almost preparing, there's almost like I got a mobile first mentality. So if I kind of scrunch this up a little bit, and if I go ahead here, well, you know what? I still have uh, somewhat of a somewhat of a mobile experience, but also, and something to mention with um, with this flat design that they've got going on right now, um, I should mention that uh, Canadian Tire also has a uh, separate app that you can download. So that's another way that they're they they have that kind of dual approach thing. They're not truly responsive, but they've definitely uh, slicked up their their look and feel with these icons to make it more modern. Right. So some stuff to look at. Um, and this is what I was doing. If I was going to build out a site for someone like a small hardware store, I would take a look at their competitors. I would take a look at Home Depot. I would take a look at Home Hardware. I would take a look at Canadian Tire. I would take a look at all these other, other guys and see what they're doing, right? And then go, okay, what do I want to do? And then what do I want to propose to the customer to make them different? What's going to differentiate their site compared to the other ones? What kind of stuff do I want? What kind of stuff do I not want? Let's take a look at some of the stuff. Let's do a little bit more market research. Let's see some stuff in the States. Uh, some stuff out of their market and some stuff in, into their market. What about local promotional stuff, things that they, they can do? Because remember, web design um, is we're all part of an ecosystem of, the, of marketing. That's part of what you know, if we're, we do web design and development, we're part of that marketing engine. So that's one thing I wanted you guys to look at. I think that's it in a nutshell. I don't want to go too, too crazy. I can continue talking about uh, web design concepts uh, at a very high level uh, all day but I don't think that's going to help you guys too, too much more. So we'll stop there, and then we'll get into um, the back end of what we missed with uh, forms. On uh, the next video, we'll take a short break, and then next day, uh, we'll talk more in detail about web fonts.